Hey everyone. Now about, I don't know, half a year ago maybe, I changed ISPs uh, to Aussie Broadband. And one of the things on day one was I had trouble initially getting connected with some DHCP issues, but I thought it was just some kind of teething issue. But anyway, after a while I realized that they did ha actually have an issue with not giving me an IPv4 uh, DHCP address. So I actually had a bit of a closer look at it yesterday and I figured out what happened and why it's happening, but it also brought up another issue that I've still got ongoing with the ISP. So anyway, a lot of this will be screen work, so I'll just switch to that and I'll bring over the old uh, sexy voice microphone and go through what happened on the screen. Okay, so to start with, I'll just show you the interfaces on the router. You can see I've got a good old standard EF0, but I've also got these um, sub-interfaces, which are just VLANs, of course, and EF0.2 is my internet um, my WAN interface, okay? This WAN is a mobile dongle, which I'll, I'll just quickly show you what that's doing. Right, so here's my main comm setup. You can see I've got the switch and the SFP modem there, and I've got the um, Raspberry Pi sitting up at the top there as the router. And here's a little um, 3G, 4G dongle that I've got for the backup internet. And that's connected to this antenna here because there's really not much reception here. I can see that's only getting 3G now instead of 4G. But that also doubles up as an SMS machine. So, you know, when everyone asks you a fucking phone number these days, I don't give my actual phone number, I just give them this. And then I use that on the computer. I was going to do a video on that. Uh, I might, might do one day, but that's my backup internet anyway, which still goes to the router as just another interface. Okay, so the WAN0 is the interface I use when I have issues as a backup. Um, I'm not going to dwell too much on that here, but... Keep in mind that's what I'm currently using for IPv4. But anyway, the main interface is EF02, which is my WAN interface. So to get an address, the Raspberry Pi does DHCP as a client, but there's two different clients on there. There's um, DHCP CD, and there's also DH client, two different ones. And what I found was DHCP CD worked, but DH client didn't, and I didn't know why. So there must be a difference, so I did some packet captures. So I'll bring up some old captures that I did months ago when I first uh, noticed this. All right, so here's a couple of packet captures. I've got the, uh, the one that failed on the left here and the one that succeeded on the right. So you can see on the, the successful one that you've got the normal, what you generally have, discover, offer, request, acknowledgement, and off you go. But the one that failed, discover, offer, request, negative acknowledgement. So something about my request in this one, it didn't like compared to this one that did work. So that's some difference between the two DHCP clients. So, it's time to have a look. And what I found, most of it's the same. I mean, there are different requests that it does, but one thing I noticed was the client identifier. So if I just open that one here and here, you can see a difference. Now the client identifier on this one, the one that worked, is simply type ethernet and the client MAC address, which is the MAC address of the Raspberry Pi. But over here, the client identifier, it's got more than that, it's got an, I, an IAID and a DUID. Now I had never seen that before. Um, I'd seen something similar in IPv6 DHCP where it doesn't, like if you reserve a, Mac, a, um, you reserve a client IP address in IPv6, you don't just use a MAC address for the reservation, you use um, a unique identifier for that client. But I'd never seen it in IPv4. Um, but what I'm noticing is this here, it's, it's saying the type is the link layer address plus time. Now, I guess that time is going to be different every time. So um, that's what it's sending. And the server didn't like that at the ISP and gave a negative acknowledgement, so I couldn't use it. And that's compared to this one over here, which is simply the MAC address. So that looked like pretty much the culprit of the problem. So initially, before I figured out that that was the issue, um, this would just happen. It was just a whole lot of negative acknowledgements and no IPv4 address. IPv6 worked fine. So I had to set up the one that failed, which was um, DH client. I wanted that to send out the same information as the one that works does. So what I had to do is look in this field here and send this information out rather than this. So if I look at the, uh, the bottom window bit here down here, scroll that up. You can see at the start of where client identifier is, boom, boom. All that stuff that's highlighted down the bottom is to do with that. Now over here, let's rip that up. Uh, down here, you can see it's just that, oh, I'll do it here, that bit there. So there's more highlighted on this one than this one. So over here, what you can see is it's got um, hardware type ethernet when it's saying that's value one. 
Now, I didn't know that, but I do now just by looking at this. So you can see the one that, that comes up down here, and then it's my MAC address. And that's it. So over here, where I've got all this other crap, the time and, and all this stuff, I need to mimic basically just sending out a one and the MAC address. So what I did is go to the um, dhpdhclient.conf, and I can send out a client identifier. I've had it remarked out just for that demo before. So I'll unremark that. And so I'm just sending out these values here of one, which was that type, as you, as you just saw over here. So that's like that one there to say it's hardware type Ethernet. And then the MAC address. So I save that and see what happens. Okay, so I'll just shuffle these around a little bit here. What I'm going to do is do a packet capture on the router and pipe it to Wireshark locally here. So on EF02 on the router, UDP port 67 for just DHCP. I'll start that up and display it here. Now I'll run DH uh, client on EF02. And it already knows it. Fuck, it already learned it from before. You can see it worked though. Um, there's enough info here to tell you what, what happened. Um, if we look at that client identifier, this time it just sent the same as um, DHCP CD client, which is just Ethernet, Ethernet that, that one, and the MAC address and it worked and I have my address. Thing is, I've got a new problem now. Even though I've got my address, so ib-4 address show device if 2 I've got, you can see the old one there when I didn't have an address, disregard that. That's my WAN address. I, um, I had to get onto the ISP because what was happening, so I did all that, but I still didn't get an IP address. So I know that works now, but what was happening earlier today, since yesterday afternoon, was I was sending out a DHCP discover to the um, to the ISP, but I was getting nothing back. I didn't get anything. It's just brown bread. So I finally had to log a case, which I didn't want to do, but I had to. So they've set up something, and of course, I'll show you how the support thing went. Right, so to open a fault, you've got to answer a few basic questions. And one of them is, are the cables connected? I mean, fuck's sake. Yes, they're connected. So anyway, I wrote the what I've just showed you a lot that um, there's no response from the DHCP server in regards to this. Um, you know, it wasn't working. I've attached a bit of a capture. I didn't give them a PCAP because I couldn't, so I just gave them a bit of a text output of it and um, a bit of background that it hasn't been right since the start, like I just explained. But um, the main concern now is to get that um, DHCP working. So they've come back, you know, yeah, we're sorry. Um, now they changed my um, IP address. As you said here, I can see there's an issue with IP4. Our servers are attempting to send an IP address to the client, however it's unsuccessful. That's crap because there was nothing getting here. So that's the first bit of shit. We've attempted to resolve this by adding a new IP address to the service, however this did not work. Well, that did work. When they changed it, because my IP address has changed now to what it used to always be, I do get an address as I just showed you before. Um, but of course they're saying it's with a router, of course it seems you've got a Raspberry Pi, they obviously saw the OUI from the um, Raspberry Pi down here, so they would have seen that's a Raspberry Pi, and well yes, you know it's correct, is there another device that you can test? So basically, uh, yeah we're sending it to you, try something else, which is just crap, okay, now I know that's crap, so I told them that. Um, I gave them a bit more detail, I said look I've got the address now, um, but what's happening now, and I'll show you what's happening, is it's not responding to ARP. So here's the next little situation. Okay, so as of right now, here's what my um, address looks like. So IP address show dev ev0.2. I have my address here. If I show my route for that, IP-4 route, you can see, they're my little LAN interfaces, disregard them. You can see that I have a default via that. So everything I send out to the internet's got to go through that, which is the gateway at the, at the ISP. Okay, so that's my, my next hop. So, what I tried to do is uh, ping 111, and I get nothing. I thought, well, that's no fucking good. So what I did, I'll go to the uh, router again, and this time just show up on the WAN interface. I'll try and ping that again. What can you see? You can see, before I can send a ping, I have to resolve the, um, the hardware address. So I'm sending out an ARP to find out who has that, which is my default gateway, and I'm getting no response from the ISP. 
So I got my IP address, but I can't. They're, they're not responding to art from me. So maybe it's something to do with the fact they changed my IP address in whatever way he did to, so that it gave me it. And now it's just not working on the new one. So I just continued my little uh, report to him saying, you know, uh, you know, the app's not getting through. Just showed him what I showed you basically and just asked if it's blocking me. IPv6 does still work nicely. So if I go to something like YouTube, which is Google, they have IPv6. A lot of things don't, as I discovered when I played with IPv6 not too long ago. Okay, so on my desktop here, I can ping Google, which will which will resolve the IPv6 address, and that's working fine. But if I uh, ping a, an IPv4 address, nothing there, and we know why. It's because of the lack of ARP response. So I've got to wait for the ISP to fix that up. And before anyone suggests setting a static ARP entry on the WAN side of my router for the ISP, I could, but I don't want to go down that road. It, I shouldn't have to do that, and it may not even work, and it should be done the right way. So I've just got to wait for the ISP to acknowledge the problem and, and fix it. But at least I can use um, YouTube in the meantime. So I'll upload this video, and I've been watching YouTube videos basically because they're the only things coming in at high speed. But what I'll show you now is just how I set up the... Um, the router to use my backup internet. So I'll just do that. So on the router, I won't go through the setup for that um, modem because that's not part of this video, but I'll just run DHC client, oh, I'm gonna talk about wireless WAN zero, which is the interface of that thing. So IP-4 address show dev WAN zero. I have an address. I mean, that's, you know, mounted of course, but it's there. So now, well, let me just check. IP-4 route to show my routing table, I'll have a couple of things here. So now I've got a default via the wireless WAN. <laughs> and you watch this. It's a bit rough. Actually, that's better than it was. Sometimes the initial one takes like 40 seconds to come back. But you can see I can use um, my backup internet for IPv4 just to get me out of trouble. But it's, it's certainly nowhere near as good as um, <laughs> the wired ISP. So I've got IPv6 going through my wired ISP and IPv4 going through the backup mobile one, at least until my ISP fixes up this shit. One thing I will show you is a part of my uh, firewall rules for that backup internet. So if the output interface name is the wireless WAN zero, which is the mobile one, and the input interface is my LAN interface here, I'm only allowing a few hosts to get out there. So I've got my server, laptop, a piano, and well, that's just the computer near piano and this desktop I'm on. So everything else gets rejected because I don't want anything around the house, which isn't much, just some Cody things that might be doing an update or a bit of this and that. I don't want them using it because they'll just swamp it and it struggles as it is. So I'll be using one of these computers when I'm trying to fix things up in an event like this. So I only let them use that. So not everything can actually get out of that. So anyway, that's just a bit on the firewall there. So there you have it. IPv6 is still here nice and fast, so I can still do all the YouTube stuff. And as I said, I'll, I'll upload this video and that. Um, and IPv4 does work, it's just slow as hell. So if I go to bomb.gov.au to look at the weather, it just takes forever. Oh, that wasn't actually that bad. Yeah, but you can see it's, it's pretty crap. So that, the little um, mobile router is struggling a bit there, but it gets me out of trouble. So anyway, hopefully the ISP will fix their shit up soon and we'll be kicking ass again. Okay, so that's what's going on at the moment. Um, there's a couple of main things that really annoyed me about that. The first one is the cop-out answers you get from the ISP. Even when I presented them with the evidence of what's going on, um, there's always the, you know, as your cable plugged in, try a different router. That's, that's not an answer, so I expected a bit better there. And secondly, I don't know why they're so pedantic on that client identifier for the DHCP client. I've never seen that before, um, so I don't know why that's there. Obviously, I can change my config here and be right, but why have they got it so strict that it, it's, it's not reserving my pure MAC address? It sounds like they're doing some extra security sort of thing. So, because your MAC address is just your MAC address, you could get another host and just copy the MAC address and plug it in my, my network here and it would be the same MAC address. But that client identifier based on time would vary. So that's, that's obviously what it didn't like, as you saw. Um, I just don't know that it needs to be that secure. I mean, who's gonna get a host bring it here, clone my MAC address, put it in my network and try and get an IP address from the ISP. So in the real world, I don't think that's necessary. But anyway, I figured that out and got rid of that so that won't be an issue. So now I'll just wait till they uh, respond to some ARPs and then I'll be um, cooking with uh, induction again. So that'll do for now. Till next time, take it easy.